Hey, I'm Kier. I work on the managed service for Apache Kafka at Google. Want to see what it will cost you to run a cluster with us? Let's go. Here are the three things that determine the cost. How much data is going through the cluster, how long you want to keep it, and how spiky the traffic is. You can get a handle on how these come together using the Google Cloud pricing calculator you see here. We've included a link in the video description if you'd like to do this for your own clusters. Let's search for Kafka in the pricing calculator and select the managed service for Apache Kafka. Now we can add a managed Kafka cluster to our estimate. The most important thing for the cost of your cluster is how much data you write to it on average. This will determine how many CPUs you need, as well as how much storage and network you use. Let's pick this apart. Let's say that on average you produce and consume 10 megabytes a second. If you're using Kafka for application integration, say, triggering some business logic when a database gets updated, this is substantial capacity. 10 megabytes a second is going to correspond to 100 to 1,000 messages a second. Storage duration will tell you how much storage space you'll need to use. What's very convenient is that we use a tiered storage model so that you don't need to pre-provision capacity in most cases. You pay as you go but it helps to know how much data you will actually store. That is just your average producer bandwidth times the storage duration. You already know the producer bandwidth, so you just need to set the duration. Not everything is about the average. You need to pre-provision enough RAM and CPU to handle the peak traffic. We think about this using the target CPU utilization. If your traffic does not vary much, we can keep the utilization at, say, 50%. That means your cluster can handle a spike in traffic double the average. If your traffic is spiky, we will have to reduce the utilization and keep a lot of spare CPU capacity. This will increase your cost, of course. Now, you have a few important ways to reduce the cost. First, you can reduce your interzone traffic by using local replica following. This makes sure that your consumer clients read data from their replicas in the same zone whenever possible. And that, in turn, means that you pay for less data transfer across zones. Second, you can save some money on CPU and RAM by buying committed use discounts for one year at 20% and three years at 40%. If you want to learn more, head over to our pricing page. It has some example configurations as well as details on how the cluster capacity translates to actual cluster size. This resource is also linked in the description. And with that, Happy coding.